Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we're going to evaluate the position of the center of mass for a right angle triangle. Uh, the mass is uniformly distributed, um, so constant density or mass density. So let's see how we set up the equations to find the x and the y position of the center of mass for this right angle triangle. Okay, so to start this off, what we're first going to do is find what is the equation for this part of our triangle. And right away, I should be able to write it like this. It should be a slope multiplied by x, and this goes through the origin, therefore there's no offset. Uh, the slope here is simply the rise over the run, and I should be able to right away uh, write that as h over l, right? That's the rise over the run is l, and that's constant value. It's a constant slope. So this is super important, right? Because this tells me the height of that line for every value of x that I have. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to break this down. I'm going to slice this uh, triangle up into a whole bunch of smaller pieces. And each one of these guys I'm going to call, it's not a, it's a small mass delta M. And there's a whole bunch, right? There's some down here. Here's another one. Uh, and here's a longer one kind of near the end of that triangle, right? Each one of these delta M's here has a mass. And what my goal now is going to be to first calculate what is the X position of the center of mass. If you had a series of point masses, this is what the equation would look like. And if each one of those point masses had a little mass delta M, I would add it up and I would have to sum up its position of the center of mass. And now all I have to do is divide by the total mass of my triangle. All right, so how do we find the total mass of the triangle? Uh, again, what I said earlier here was that this uh, triangle, uh, that the density was constant. Okay? The density is going to be the total mass uh, divided by the total area. And the total area for this one, uh, this is something we can easily calculate because it's simply uh, base times height divided by two. That's the area of a triangle, right? So the base is L, uh, the height is H, and all that gets divided by two. Uh, I can swing the two up on the other side. So let's just get one final equation for my density. And this is a constant density for this problem uh, over LH. Okay, so this is also a really important equation. And now we're gonna start evaluating um, this term here in the sum because we know the denominator. Here it is right here. So what I wanna do now is I wanna get an expression for each one of these. How do I write down the mass of each one of those little guys? Well, the mass of each one of these little guys, guess what? It's going to be equal to the density and multiplied by the little area of each one of these kind of trapezoids. Okay. And what you do here is we're going to estimate it just by a rectangle. That's kind of easy to do, right? The area of each one of these uh, rectangles is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be the width. I'm going to call that delta x and multiplied by, by the height, right? The height here is simply going to be yi. So let's substitute our values over here. I'm just gonna leave this as the density. And now for the area term, uh, what it's going to be is area of a rectangle, that's delta x, multiplied by the height of each one of those little guys. Now that's it. All I need to do now is substitute everything back into the equation for the x center of mass. So let's go ahead and do that. x center of mass equals I'm summing over each one of these little masses, and now I'm substituting this equation right here. It's the density multiplied by the area, yi, and I still have x, right? That's still in my original equation, okay? And here you need to divide by the total mass, and the total mass is I have right here, right? It's the density multiplied by the area. It's the density, the same density as, us, as it's in the uh, numerator, multiplied by the area. And the area we said was height uh, times the width uh, divided by two. Okay, we can simplify a few things. Uh, the density is constant, which means we can divide through by it. Uh, at the end, what I'm going to do is just rewrite this term again. I have two divided by HL. And here I have this summation over here. Uh, the summation, look at it, it's, uh, I have XI, I have YI, and I have delta X. And I need to sum over each one of these terms. 
Now we're going to, there's one kind of other term over here is this height. This height here represents the height of each one of these small elements. And the height changes as I move along. Right? And the height is given basically by my equation right here. The height at any position, it depends on the slope multiplied by its position. right? Because the height down over here is going to be smaller than the height over here. The area is different. So what you have to do now is substitute this into my equation in the summation. Okay, so we're just about done. We have all of these prefactors over here, which were constant terms. And what I'm going to do here is sum. I'm going to leave this the same way. I'll leave my xi. And now we're going to substitute what the value of yi is. That's the height of each one of those little slices. Again, it's given by our equation for the straight line. And delta x. Okay, notice we can cancel a few things. I have h here and I have h here. What else? I'm going to be grouping these l's. There's an l here and there's an l here. All right, so if I combine both of those things, what you end up getting over here is 2 divided by L squared. And now the last part here is going to be the sum. Now count how many x's I have. I have 2, right? So this is I have to sum both of them. Uh, I mean, I mean to multiply both of them first, and then I have delta x. Okay, here's my equation for the center of mass. And the last step, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the limit when delta x is very, very small, right? If I take the limit when delta x is going to be very small, that tends toward a small little differential element, dm. So again, if we take our limit now, the equation that we end up getting for the position of the center of mass, 2 over L squared, uh, the sum here actually becomes an integral. And we're going to integrate all the values of x going from 0, and 0 goes all the way to L down over here at the end. Uh, this here becomes x squared. And the limit when delta x is small becomes dx. Uh, this guy here is a pretty straightforward uh, integral. Here, I'm going to give myself a bit of space over here. Let's kind of do it down at the bottom. All right, so to evaluate this integral, we have x of the center of mass equals 2 over L squared. And now this integral, this is only a polynomial, so the value of that integral should be x cubed uh, over 3. And here you evaluate that between the limits from 0 to L, right? Those are the values of x. Um, substitute L in here, we get 2 over L squared. And here we get L cubed uh, over 3. Uh, at the end, you can cancel out a couple of those L's, cancel this one, and what you're left with uh, at the end is our final position, which is 2L over 3. So whatever that length is, kind of two-thirds down over here is going to be the position of the X center of mass. And that makes sense because the halfway point was here, and we argue that uh, since there's more mass kind of in this section of this triangle, it should be a little bit farther down. Okay, so that's the position of the x center of mass for a right angle triangle. Uh, let's repeat some similar steps now and find what the y position of the center of mass is. All right, so here's the y position of the center of mass. Again, we're really trying to find what this value is here. Now the equation that I'm using looks kind of similar. Uh, I've added this extra little subscript here, which wasn't there in the first part, and let me explain why. Remember, when you're adding up all of the different masses of my different slices, so we have the uh, mass of each slice that's going to be simply the density multiplied by the area of this particular slice. Okay. Um, when you substitute in this kind of uh, summation over here, uh, the position is actually the position of the center of mass of that particular slice. So in this case, again, if this is uniform mass distribution, the position of the center of mass of that particular slice is this one. Right, this is the y position of the center of mass of this slice. Now notice it's not the height, right? The height goes all the way to here, but for each slice, it's exactly half the height. So what I wanna do now is I really wanna write this equation in terms of the height. And the height here is simply going to be yi divided by two. And that's kind of the important part over here. That's kind of different from the previous Right For the x center of mass, uh, the position of the x position of the center of mass of each slice um, is simply the value x because it's right in the center. 
Okay, so that's what makes this guy a little bit different uh, when you slice it up. So that introduces a factor of two. Uh, so let's go ahead now and start substituting our values. Okay, we have the total mass. Again, that term is pretty easy. It's simply the density multiplied by the area of uh, the total triangle. So that's height uh, multiplied by length divided by two. Uh, what else? Uh, we have a factor of one half here that uh, should come out from the top. So let's pull that guy out. So we have one half. And now we have our summation. Summation over summing each individual mass and multiplied by the height of each rectangle. All right, what we could do again is substitute our value for uh, this little mass. Go ahead and do that. Uh, before doing that, we can cancel out some of these terms. Uh, this too, you can convince yourself that it's going to cancel with this guy right here. So that term kind of disappears. Uh, what you're left with now is down in the denominator, we simply have density multiplied by H multiplied by the length. All right, and at the top, what we have is our summation. Now, what is the mass again of each one of these little slices? It's simply the density multiplied by the area. And the area is going to be the height multiplied by the thickness. And the thickness we had said previously that this thickness right here should be delta X. Okay, uh, go ahead and substitute that up here. What we have is density uh, multiplied by the height. Remember, there's this other height term, this other yi term. So let me just go ahead and combine both of those. So that ends up being squared. And then we have delta x, delta x, uh, which can be written like this. All right, we're just about done. What you want to do now is maybe cancel out those densities. Those terms are constant like this. Uh, let's rewrite this. And we have sum over i of yi squared multiplied by delta x. And all of that gets divided by h multiplied by the length. Okay, so this is the term we want to evaluate. Uh, the best way to do this now is if you're adding up all of these uh, different factors, maybe write this in terms of x. And we could do that here using our equation, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the sum over i. Substitute the equation for the straight line. This is h over l and multiplied by xi. And don't forget to square that multiplied by delta x. All of that gets divided by HL. All right, there's gonna be some terms we can cancel out over here. Uh, for now, let's just kind of <laughs> just clean it up. So this is Y position of the center of mass. All right, I get H squared over L squared. That's from the term in the bracket. And I previously had uh, one over HL, something like this. And then I have my summation over I this term here becomes xi squared and delta x. Uh, the term here in the bracket, let's just call this last term over here, this is the exact same as previous, right? Uh, what you end up doing is you take the limit when delta x goes towards zero, and that means that uh, delta x tends toward a infinitesimal element, and then you convert the sum to an integral, okay? At the end, uh, maybe let's clean this up a little bit. We have an H here, we have H squared. And here we're going to have L cube, right? So the prefactor here, the term in the front is H divided by L cube. And then this summation, once it's converted to an integral, is you integrate from zero all the way to L. And you integrate X squared DX, okay? Uh, this integral term, this simply becomes L3 over 3, okay? Convince yourself here that this is L3 over 3. Uh, and at the end, uh, the last part that we're going to have is just grouping everything together. Let's kind of do it down over here. Sorry, we're running out of space a little bit. Uh, y center of mass uh, is H, L cube, and then the integral becomes L cube over 3, okay? Uh, notice the L cubes kind of cancel out, if you did it correctly. And at the end, you're left with uh, h over 3, which is kind of what we would expect, right? So this position over here of the y center of mass should be h over 3. And the position of the x center of mass as measured from the end over here should be, again, you're going two-thirds from, from the point. Um, for x center of mass, we had 
uh, two-thirds of L in that particular case.